For years we've been using uh, partition by syntax, but recently we've started using cluster by syntax, which is now like best practice. And what is the problem that we are not using anymore that syntax and it's better to use that syntax, which is liquid partitioning. In traditional partitions, we had quite a lot of problems with small files. So imagine that you have partitioning per date and per customer together. So every time when we have our bugger delivery, we save data to that folder and the files are really small and they cannot be combined with another ones because another files are in other folder. And of course, usually we don't have four customers and few dates. We have much more. So let's imagine that we have 10,000 customers and our primary partitioning and 10,000 dates as second partitioning. It gives us 100 million files. I, I can say good luck with reading all your data when you have so many folders. And every time when you get all data or you use some query where syntax, some filter, which is not related to that partitioning, you need to read anyway, all of this, uh, all of these folders. So Databricks decided that it's nice to uh, solve that problem of small files, but combining them together, but you cannot combine them inside the folders. So the new idea was to use liquid partitioning where you can combine that files outside of folder structure and that this files can get optimal size, which is around one gigabyte. So, th so this file in that example, our eCorp, uh, which is like the biggest delivery place is combined to one file. And whole idea of liquid partitioning is also that it reads your read patterns. Then parti partitions are combined according to that, because maybe you are not reading single date. You are reading anyway, whole month. So then based on that, the partitions will be combined. So in that example, we can see that all our small customers are combined to one big file and also eCorp is combined to one big file. This way we don't have any, any more small files problem, but we still can benefit from partitioning when it's needed because it's using our read pattern. So for example, eCorp is our really popular customer. So we are often analyzing that data and reading just eCorp. So it's combined together, like uh, all uh, eCorp files are combined together to one file and on small customers, we are not looking so often to them are combined and as another file. So uh, to, to summarize in with liquid partitioning, instead of having that structures, we, ha we having that structure, which is not in fact folders, but partitions outside folders. So it's files which are matching our defined liquid partitioning. Uh, few things to notice uh, to activate that structure. We need to use optimize command. Uh, probably it's uh, much more efficient to use predictive optimization because then it will be run when it's needed. Uh, also liquid partitioning is playing really well with deletion vectors because both combined offer row level concurrency. And last uh, uh, liquid partitioning is quite new. So it was introduced in runtime 13.3, uh, but then in runtime 14, it was improved and also row level concurrency was added. So it's the best just to use the last LTS run runtime 14.3. If you have any question regarding liquid partitioning, please leave them in comments below. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.